We studied an intervention to try and help patients with common chronic metabolic conditions, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, adhere to their medications. So there are lots of, uh, lots of studies that have existed over the past number of decades or that have been conducted over the past number of decades to improve medication adherence. We know this is a major problem that everybody in the healthcare ecosystem now understands. Uh, it contributes to all kinds of preventable morbidity and mortality, and there's all kinds of interventions that have been developed to try and improve adherence. Most of the interventions that are out there are, have been only modestly effective, and even the ones that are effective are, have problems with sustainability or scalability. They're often expensive and require specialized infrastructure. And so we wanted to figure out whether or not a technologically enabled intervention that leveraged pharmacists who are embedded already in a multi-payer specialty practice would improve medication adherence. So we used a behaviorally tailored intervention that was mostly conducted by pharmacists, but it was wrapped around with technology. So we sent patients progress reports on how they were doing on adherence and their disease control. We used text message reminders. We used relatively simple things too, like pill boxes that were customized to people's and the number of times a day people take their medications, plus this behaviorally, behaviorally tailored interview. Uh, and then we were trying to figure out what this did predominantly for medication adherence, uh, and for then clinical outcomes, like disease control, how well people's blood pressure were controlled. So to remind you, we were studying a group of people who to begin with had poor disease control or suboptimal disease control. They were not meeting guideline targets, and they were non-adherent to their medications, at least what claims data would tell us uh, non-adherence is. And so what we found is that on average, adherence went up by about five percentage points uh, for the entire population. So we studied this in an intention to treat framework. So everybody who was randomized to receive the intervention we analyzed, including those people who didn't receive the intervention at all. So we were trying to test this in a way that would be scalable. Uh, and so we knew that some people when we invited them to participate would say no thank you. Uh, about half of people ac accepted a pharmacist telephone consultation, which is what we expected up front. And so when we instead didn't look at the entire population, but looked at the as-treated population, or the people that got all of the components of the intervention, uh, adherence went up by about 10 or 11 percentage points. And so overall, that's a pretty big effect for adherence. On the downside, when we looked at blood pressure control, and when we looked at LDL cholesterol level, and we looked at A1C, or hemoglobin A1C, we found very little, if not any, change at all in these outcomes. Uh, and so we see this disconnect, that a moderately large improvement in adherence, certainly bigger than we expected going into the study, with no commensurate change in clinical outcomes. And so our take home is a little bit mixed. It's like, this is a strategy to improve adherence, yes. But this may not be all that's necessary to improve actual clinical outcomes, and we may need to do other things. So I think it tells us a couple of different things. So first of all, the relationship between adherence and outcomes is not as clear as we think it is. So the, there have been other, other studies, including those which I've conducted, in other disease populations in which improving adherence by four or five percentage points is in fact exactly the amount that you need to drive clinical outcomes. But in a slightly more stable population, people with outpatients with, with cardiometabolic conditions who have not just been discharged from hospital, maybe we need a bigger improvement in adherence. That could be one takeaway. The second takeaway could be that improving adherence in and of itself for patients with poorly controlled conditions uh, may not be all that's necessary. Sometimes we might need things like treatment intensification. And so focusing only on adherence may be missing the real problem uh, or the real thing that patients need for success. And so there's a, probably a mix of things that are really necessary. The third is that we tested this intervention in a very specific way. We wanted to develop a scalable and sustainable intervention. And we studied it in a health system, embedded in a health system, used the infrastructure of a health system, used their electronic health records and the, their access to claims data that they share with payers. Uh, we used remote technology to help the patients. But maybe that's not the right solution for all patients. And in fact, there's some patients that would be better served with that intervention, and other patients who have more complicated chronic conditions, maybe they actually do, in fact, need more expensive in-person help.